In this video, I want to talk about an important technique for preserving your context while operating a script. Now once again, we've talked about context in previous videos in this course. And so understanding that as you're scripting and doing things, managing context is a really big deal. Now one of the things that comes up for developers, say that they're on a contact record and then they have a found set of five or ten records and they want to press a button that does something. Frequently when you run a script that does something, it will change the context of the window that the user is currently using. And that could be a real drag. Say for example that the user had done a complex find of finding everyone who was in the state of Texas, who uh, had this sort of situation or that sort of situation, or they had uh, you know an invoice paid on a certain date range or something like that. That find is kind of complex, and if you just press a button and it blows up the hard work that the users put into, you're not making them very happy. And so the issue comes in is that when you write a script, you want to basically restore the context of what the user had going in the first place. Now this development technique is known amongst more intermediate to high-end FileMaker developers, and that is the idea of not necessarily restoring the context, but maybe never destroying it in the first place. And what I mean by that, a good example of this is this dashboard charts here that are updated with this script down here. Now we just shot three videos that explain how this works in a lot of specific detail, and that's for our people who buy the Pro course. That being said, one of the little snippets in there that's really valuable to everyone is to understand that if you're going to do a lot of finds and sorts and calculations and things like that, and you don't want to monkey too much with the current window or the current layout, what you do is as your script begins, you actually run a new window command over here, and then you do all your work over here. You, you do a find, you go here, you go here, you go to a maintenance screen, you do this, you do that, you jump around. And when you're done, the final results of whatever you are doing, you're going to save into a field, maybe a global field, maybe save it into a variable, I don't know. But the point is, is that once you're done, this window that you've been kind of abusing in your script, you simply close it and leave it. And so the original window that the user was using is preserved. Now, that can result in some interesting uh, window flashing as the script executes. Say for example that I um, run this script right here and I'm going to have it uh, actually pop the window and do all the calculations for us and if we see that window you're going to see a lot of flashing. Now it did happen pretty quick there but if you watch it this window pops, it flashes, it blinks, all this stuff going on up top. You see that? I'll do that one more time so you can see all that flashing. And one of the things that users dislike is they don't like a lot of spastic flashing going on. I mean, I guess it's good that they know that FileMaker is doing something and it's busy being productive, but it really it's not overly professional. So another technique which people will do is as they spawn the new window, they will spawn it way off the screen. For example, they can spawn it to be like five pixels by five pixels. And of course, by moving it right here, I'm restricted down to a couple hundred right here but you can actually open the window via script at like two or three pixels by whatever. More importantly, you can actually specify that it spawns itself way off to the left over here. Uh, you can tell it its location is like negative 2,000 to the left and 2,000 down. So it spawns it like way off the screen that no one ever sees. So it can be flashing and freaking out and popping this, that, and the other thing. And people don't see it, all they see is a window like this, when you run it, they just see this. This is an example of it running without the poppy flashy thing. Notice that not much happened. There was a little bit of a flash right there because a record was updated and this image belongs to that record. But pretty much there's not much of a flash. In fact, normally the only thing you would see flash is these charts being updated. Notice that we can spawn the window, protect the user's context, and also then move it off screen. So let's actually take a look at the script for this. I'm going to open up the script workspace right here. And right here is this script right here. And this is the main script that runs, that, run, that updates the charts. These two scripts right here are kind of the command and control scripts. And then each chart is controlled by its own specific script. Now, in this command and control script up here, uh, what you end up having is that spot where we actually spawn a new window. And we do this because we spawn it in here in this window and then all these other scripts as they're running take advantage of that new window. 
And what we can do is most of the time it's spawned in a location that's negative 2,000 and negative 2,000 from the left side of the screen, so no one ever sees it. It seems like this is kind of an imaginary area, but as far as the computer is concerned, it's real because we gave it precise coordinates for where the window originates. It works. We could also have made it a certain size, but we didn't bother given the fact that it was already hidden off screen. So I say OK. And I notice that I have one additional trick here that's pretty cool. And that is the fact that I've used a modifier key here. And this modifier key is handy when doing diagnostic uh, script work. And what we understand is that most of the time when people run this, we want it to spawn the window and hide the window. During diagnostics, especially during script debugger, even though the script is going slow, we still need to see this other window that's popped up. When it pops this new window here, we actually need to see it. And as it steps through the script in the script debugger, we need to see what's happening, what's going on. Well, if it's 2,000 characters off to the left, we still can't see it. We can't even mouse over there to get it. So what we do is that we put a little uh, trap right here that says that we get the active modifier key that's being held down on the keyboard. So if the shift key or option key or alt key or whatever control key is being held down, if any of them are being held down, then it spawns the window in the same location that the current window is on. So it'll spawn it right here next to it. It would spawn it, in fact, right on top of it. If we don't hold the modifier key down, then it spawns it off to the left. And actually, in FM starting point, we're leaving this in there because it's kind of handy and it's a useful diagnostic tool. Now, if you're building a commercial application, you need to think about what might happen if the user decides to run this script and holding down the shift key or something, then they're gonna get this pop-up window that's gonna flash. If they don't press it, then it runs normally off the screen at negative 2,000 characters. You just have to decide yourself if that's important for you to conceal or what is the likely outcome if they press and hold the shift key down. If a user is pressing and holding a modifier key down and they're pressing a button, they're looking for a different outcome. They're looking for something different to happen. So just keep that in mind. So this is a handy trick to preserve context, then to hide the window out of the screen so people can't see it. And then the third trick is actually to use a modifier key to detect if you wanna actually have it visible so you can step through kind of a diagnostic with a step-by-step -step review with the script debugger.